Now, more stories, insights, and analysis of Illinois policy and politics. This is Illinois Rising, presented by the Illinois Policy Institute. Once again, your host, AM560's Dan Proft. Dan Proft back with Pat Hughes, co-founder of the Illinois Opportunity Project. And uh, Pat, this week, uh, former House Speaker Denny Hastert, the man who spent a decade as the third most powerful person in the Western world, pled guilty to, uh, well, as part of a plea bargain to the structured bank withdrawals he was making as part of some extortion scheme that he was the target of paying an unnamed individual three and a half million dollars. He's going to be sentenced in February, but uh, the plea bargain is a uh, max of zero to six months. He may serve no prison time. He may get six months. And I wonder if you think that is justice. And if you think U S attorney's office, Zach Farden's office would have struck the same deal if Hastert were just, uh, you know, an unnamed regular Joe guy who was part of an extortion scheme to cover up past misconduct, which they intimated was of a sexual nature. Yeah, Dan, I actually think that uh, you have the seminal piece on this, and it ran in Friday's tri- Tribune and also on upstream-ideas.com, uh, uh, where you where you called it out. Look, this is an Al Capone-type circumstance where you know uh, that and the feds indicated that they knew that uh, Hastert had done some terrible things uh, back when he was a wrestling coach at Yorkville High School. And uh, and the punishment should have been maximized because they, they had him dead to rights. This, there, there, this federal uh, crime that he did carried much stiffer penalty. He may walk away without, think about this, without any jail time. They're talking about six months. The judge could give him probation uh, for doing these terrible things and then paying hush money to cover it the, up. The flip side is that the judge could also give him more than the sentencing recommendation by U.S. attorneys. They, he, judge Durkin could do that. I, I would love to. If Judge Durkin did that, I uh, frankly, I just don't see that. I wish I, I could see that happening. I just don't see that happening. And this is just an example of, I'm not exactly sure what it's an example of, because typically Farden and, and, and his predecessor, Fitzgerald, all these guys are always going against public officials. That's how Blagojevich got 14 years in prison. Why is Hastert, who did what is, you know, as horrible a thing as you could possibly do to someone, how could he be let off this easily? Well, that's a question to me. I don't know the answer to that question, but I think that's the question Zach Farden, the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District, has to answer. Uh, I think uh, any plea deal should include Denny Haster telling us why he was paying an unnamed individual three and a half million dollars. Uh, what was the nature of that transaction? That should be part of his allocution when he is sentenced in February. Uh, this is somebody whose salary we paid, who was third in line to the presidency, who may have been compromised when he was the House Speaker uh, of the United States Congress. Yeah, the Foley scandal. Right. The, uh, just, one, just one example. We There may be more. We don't know. Uh, there needs to be an accounting of that. And also there needs to be an accounting of the case that uh, has been put together and pursued by Zach Farden. Why was information leaked about this past quote unquote misconduct, the U.S. attorney's term, if you didn't believe you could prove the underlying charge uh, absent the statute of limitations limitation? Y- you can't kind of have it both ways. Zach Farden is a public official, too. He's appointed, but he's paid by us and there when you have somebody that is so high profile was in such a powerful position is been insinuated that he is guilty of uh, outside of perhaps murdering someone the most heinous crime that you can commit there needs to be an accounting uh, on the prosecutor prosecutor side there needs to be an accounting on denny hassard side or i don't think you have justice yeah i think you're exactly right and i think it's even more than that and your piece uh pointed this out i thought remarkably well and i you know it pains me to give you a compliment yes remarkably well pains me to hear it that that the republican party and in this state uh and and the democrats um are asleep at the wheel right we, we've sort of you know outsourced the notion that uh this is this is going to be a party of economics only free market party which are all wonderful good things and and we, we've sort of abandoned sort of more of the moral compass and the moral issues and frankly this is where we get and you make the argument that that's part of the reason why the party in the state of illinois is a is a super minority party and hopefully uh, that's changing, but it also tells me something about what is it about Illinois politicians? And it's not, it can't possibly just be the people, right? It has to be the structure 
that allows these types of people to be elevated to these positions of power. Because every time I turn around, whether it's Hastert, whether it's Bird Bennett, whether it's uh, uh, you know a number of different officials, Shock, Jesse Jackson, Shock, Jr., everybody, et on and on, uh, Sandy Jackson. Although Shock hasn't been indicted yet, yet, yet. On and on and on and on. So what is it about the structure of how we do our politics here that leads to this? Because this is the only state in the nation that has this type of corruption. And the Haster thing is just unbelievable, given his how he climbed uh, to the top of the ladder in politics. Well, I, I would suggest that the culture is the driver. And the culture in Illinois has been both parties adopt the spoils of war philosophy of government. That winning elections is about gaining control of a big pot of cash and resources to distribute to your friends when you win. Uh, and so as long as everybody's getting paid, then someone's character, that's secondary. Someone's private conduct, that's unimportant. It's all just to make sure everybody uh, who needs to get paid gets paid. And so you have some people that are kind of of the, you know, cut it out or cut me in. And uh, so a lot, a lot of people on both sides of the spectrum get cut in. And we just kind of go along with the less deft politicians at this game of kleptocracy being picked off by the federal government from time to time. And the more deft politicians who are engaged in uh, uh, the same kind of conduct in, in terms of the spoils of war model I'm describing, like a Mike Madigan, the ones that are skilled at that, they, at Burke, they go on and avoid prosecution uh, somehow. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's a big problem, and it's kind of a crossroads for the Republican Party. Governor Rauner's election is not the end all be all. That's the beginning it's of the beginning. Pot potentially clawing the way, clawing our way back, and changing the political culture in the state. And so, the leadership of the Republican Party needs to decide if we're just going to be a I'm a fiscal conservative and anything else goes party. And by the way, uh, the idea that fiscal decisions are not ultimately moral decisions is something that is lost on people. But if they can't connect the dots, it doesn't mean that it's not true. You know, when you recklessly spend other people's money, that's that's a character issue, too. So they can decide that it's we're just one dimensional people. It's fiscal conservatism and anything else goes or we're going to be a party uh, that is going to provide the requisite moral, but not moralizing leadership for this state on fiscal matters and all matters. This, that seems to me the choice. Yeah. And, and, and what it does is it puts us in the same category as them. So even though it's the Democrats that are killing the state, they get to point and say, oh, it's it's both sides. It's both parties. It's both people's fault. Both both parties have criminals. Both part It fills that it, it fills this sort of both parties. All politicians are bad. Both parties are responsible narrative. And then it allows them to batch in the end Madigan and Rauner into one thing when really it's Madigan and his cronies that have caused our demise and Rauner who's trying to get us out of it. It just allows them to patch that all together.